This week's episode of our show is sponsored by Blood and Doom. Blood and Doom is a dark and gritty fantasy game with a unique rule set for those hoping to branch away from 5th edition. The setting contains hex maps, points of interest, settlements, NPCs, and everything else that you might need to explore the world. And a dark fantasy world is not complete without its capricious and dark gods and the cults that follow them, which are fully detailed in the book as well. The game features a unique player-facing D10 dice pool mechanic, with momentum for boosting allies or landing devastating attacks. There's no hit points to track either. Instead, there are wounds, injuries, and other afflictions that can bring down your character. If you want to check out the rules, there's a free primer bundle that includes over 500 pages of ready-to-play material across three core books. This bundle even includes a soundtrack and a world map with a free starting adventure included as well. The Kickstarter campaign is live until the end of April, so check it out if you're interested. The links are down in the video description. And now, onto this week's episode. Greetings! My name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. Today, we are ranking the multi-class combinations built around the Bard in D&D 5e. If you want to see how we are ranking the multi-class combinations, we have a separate video explaining our ranking system right up over there. But basically, we're going to look at how the Bard combines with each of the other classes in D&D. Is it something that you can benefit from taking a few levels or a lot of levels? And is it better than just sticking with the Bard in general? There's a lot to discuss today, so let's get rolling. So as a reminder, these are our subjective rankings, and Kelly and I are super biased in tons of different ways based on how we enjoy playing the game. To counterbalance that, we've also included our community rankings at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that as well. There's a lot to discuss today, so let's get rolling. So let's kick things off with the Artificer, uh, the Songsmith, uh, so to speak. We have music, we have mechanics, musical mechanics. Yeah, so... I mean, you could roleplay your character as a sound engineer. You could roleplay your character as a failed musician who now is the sound tech because he couldn't cut it as a singer. Or like one of those gearheads that's really into like tuning with their guitars or using maybe synthesizer. You could be Daft Punk. S tier. I, we have to play. <laughs> we both. We both have to play. We both have to play. And you partner with other artists and remix all that music and and release like albums that are utter hot fire and then you break up. And there's good You break up at the point where you literally were about to enter the age where you would have finally been understood and accepted for your amazing. No, Daft Punk have. everyone knows okay, they're Grammy Award winning musicians. I know, but they were before their time and their time was here and they made they were they making are timeless. a combo. Okay. You can play a timeless artist as well by combining Bard and Artificer. So, does it actually work? No. It, no. It, no, it, it probably doesn't. What are you getting from your artificer levels that you aren't going to get more of better from a bard? Armor. But there's a lot of bard subclass. If you want armor yeah. as a bard, you have many options to get armor. And if you want to have a good AC as a bard, you already have those options available to you. So it's not like you need to go to the artificer to get your armor proficiencies. Infusions. Then that begs the question of, are the infusions worth slowing down your spell progression no. as a bard for? No. And are you getting anything from the artificer spell list? I, I feel like for most bards, anything that you could want from the artificer spell list, you could pilfer with magical secrets. And I really am hard pressed to think of what would be on that artificer spell list that you would want. Not a whole lot. I do. Th I I think that this is a pretty weak multi class. I can't imagine other yeah. than playing Daft Punk. Yeah, I can't and imagine. that that role playing concept is 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 super cool. I don't even know what subclass I would do to make that work. Either. I mean, armorer because then I get the full suit. Which yes. Puts okay. The helmet yes. On. Sorry, I I stand corrected. Obviously, you're an armorer artificer because you need to have the whole Daft Punk get on. And you're an eloquence bard because let's be real. Anytime a Daft Punk song comes on, I am persuaded. I don't know what for, but <laughs> no. 
It could Lore be bard. or glamour. Glamour. Uh, could you're, be you're glamour right. bard. No, you're right. Could be glamour it's bard. It's glamour bard armor. Yeah. D tier. I do think it's pretty bad. But I don't know if it's D tier. I think that there what, might. What's making it C for you? Well, it, it's not like there's anything that's fundamentally incompatible. They're just not not really building. Like I give it C for cool. It's cool conceptually. I'm sure there might be, maybe there's a dip in there somewhere. But I I really don't know where it is. I just personally don't see a world where I would combine my bard with an artificer. I I, I mean, again, you sold me on Daft Punk. But besides that, I am like 0% interested in this combination. I would rather stay a full class bard. Okay. Moving along, we come back to the barbarian, which we discussed in our barbarian episode. And conceptually, barbarian gets a lot of points for being cool. Yeah. Flipping this discussion around, I got a whole bunch of levels of Bard. I'm going to take two levels of Barbarian. Is it good? No. Not not, <laughs> not really. But you don't want to rage against the machine? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do want to rage against the machine. Uh, okay, again, sold. <laughs> Are we Daft Punk? Are we Rage Against the Machine? Yeah. Amazing. Here, here We're Rage Against the Machine in the Barbarian. Uh, I mean, Rage Against the Machine also works for a Barbarian Artificer. It but... does. <laughs> d- yeah, it does. It but, does. But we're not talking but the, about but, that but, that, but it doesn't work because you don't have the Bard for the musical element of it. Fair. Right? So now we have to triple multi-class Bard, Artificer, yeah. Barbarian. Terrible multi-class. This is a but s- that is metal. Like, let's, let's just say that is metal. <laughs> no, okay, but... Bard? Three chords, angry, angry personality, go win a Grammy. Bard and Barbarian <laughs> don't <laughs> combine. Uh, they, you don't want to rage because you can't spell cast. Yes. And you don't want to do anything other So than your spell anger cast. issues prevent you from expressing yourself through music. So your character arc is getting over your rage. So your character arc is to abandon your barbarian levels that you took. D tier. <laughs> yeah, it's it, yeah. I I just you can't get around the fact that you can't concentrate or cast spells when you're raging, and that's the, kind of the fundamental issue with multiclassing barbarian with any spell casting class. It's yeah. usually going to end up at D tier. I can't yeah. think of an example right now where it won't be a D tier. Yeah, but... it's like the iconic ability of the class. Does not work with the iconic ability of the class. Cleric. The, um, I mean, you're a choir boy. Are you a choir boy? Or is this all about like that country music that's really got that heavy no. faith thing no, no, to no, no, it? No, no, I used to listen to a ton of Christian pop punk. You are Reliant K. <laughs> <laughs> Your bard cleric is Reliant K. Okay, I, f- I feel like there's a lot of like very faith, like... You know, obviously, yes, you could have like the choral hymns and everything like that, but like we're going cooler with this because we're under oath. Yeah, yeah. I listened to a lot of I. It, it was funny that growing up, I didn't realize that. Is this an episode about music? We're going to talk about our favorite. I bands? feel like we're going to be talking about a lot of music in this episode. Um, <laughs> um, cleric bard. Okay, so actually, this is good. the The classic cl- bard cleric multi class. A while ago, it, and this was before a lot of the spells were added in Tasha's and a lot of things were changed. There used to be this really amazing healer build that was a lore bard that took one or two levels of life domain cleric. This used to be one of the most accessible ways to get the life cleric bonus to healing mm-hmm. on aura of vitality. Mm. Because you would take your six you take your six levels of bar of lore bard to get magical secrets you get aura vitality there you've got your one level of cleric so you've got your blessed healer so now you have that souped up aura of vitality but that's not really the case anymore well now clerics can just get aura of vitality so you don't need to be a bard to get it you don't need to be a bard to get that amazing combo nevertheless a small dip in cleric, we, we've already seen so far that a small dip in cleric is generally pretty good. Yeah. And I think that this this is not a combo that doesn't work. It's a combo that still works and one that is still a very good character and arguably has many more strengths to it than a compared to a baseline cleric. 
depending on where your spell selection comes from. Because the interesting thing about the the, the short multi-class dip there is that now as the cleric dip, you grabbed Bless, which is a spell that bards really like to have. Yeah. And a character that is bringing both Bless, Bardic Inspiration, and is bringing Aura Vitality, and is having all that extra, extra healing, it actually works pretty well. And you get a lot out of just that one or two levels of Cleric as a Bard. I mean, I think the reason, the, the secret, if we strip away everything here, the secret is that the Bard is one of the best support characters in the game. The Cleric is also one of the best support yes. characters in the game. So really, you're getting more of what's good. You're, you're getting two doses of different versions of support Mm -hmm. that allows you to be more diverse in your support options. I would add some clarity here, and this is where the, the nuance of our videos comes kind of... The, where, this is where the nuance of the discussion comes into play. It's better to take one level of cleric and then go the rest bard than it is the other way around. And an even split between the two of them probably isn't what you want to go for. So the dip, I think the dip is... A plus, possibly S. But we are in the Bard video right now, yes. meaning that we're starting with Bard. I think that this is one of those ones where if you take one, maybe two levels of Cleric, it's A plus, possibly S tier. The more levels of Cleric you take and the fewer levels of Bard you have, or the more you come to parity, the worse it gets. So it could be said that broadly speaking, it's a B, but I think that that specific case of dipping one or two levels of cleric as a bard is probably a plus s what will you give it for this video i think i'm going to go with an a so i'm going to give it a b and i think that when we come to the cleric video and talk about starting cleric and then moving into bard then it's going to be an a or an s but i think starting bard dipping cleric i'm going to give it a b there's options here there's a lot of potential but it's probably not my prime choice. Okay. Druid. So the Druid is the Druid Bard is that You're real... singing Lumberjack. No, it's the hippie. It's your classic hippie music. Pink like Floyd. Maybe a bit of Pink Floyd, maybe that like good like stoner music with a little bit of that environmentalist sort of theme okay, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm thinking maybe Buffy Saint Marie. Okay. It's like the group of people around the campfire with their, like, drums You're going to sing stuff. Kumbaya? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I, I also think that there's a lot of people... You know who I could see being a bard druid? Oddly enough, Neil Young. Yeah, I can get that. Right? And you could potentially go into more folksy country vibes. Now, the, the thing that's interesting about this, too, is that if we look in kind of like our lore of the origins of the druid and the bard, the druid and the bard have a lot of very close associations in and close roots in Irish mythology, speci quite specifically, and a lot of overlap between them. You, you will find characters in that mythology that are they a bard are they a druid they they can be interchangeably referred to as both in some time in in some cases you know it depends on how historically accurate the retelling of the tale is and how stringent that telling of the tale is with these terms but they and if we look back even in the history of D, &D the bard emerging out of this multi-class of like fighter druid rogue sorcerer sort of things so it's interesting that the dna of these two classes conceptually has a lot of the same roots but but mechanically in fifth edition i really don't know where you're gonna go with this it's interesting because the druid and the cleric are similar in the fact that they're yeah. support characters they use wisdom they're full spell casters the cleric a few levels adds to the bard. Yeah, see, the, with a cleric, it's easy because you can take a 13 in wisdom, and that's fine on a bard, and then you still keep your charisma, your high score, and any of the cleric spells that you pick, you don't really worry about the ones that have relevance but, of wisdom. But why, when we apply the same thing to the druid, does it not work? And I think, I think mm. my answer is that the cleric gives you a lot more benefits up front. It does. And better spells that you want as a bard over yes. what the druid I, I completely agree with that analysis. I think that 
The druid is a far less front-loaded class, except for the moon druid. <laughs> yeah. And and with the exception of the moon druid, once again, the moon druid is another thing where if you're not going deep into the class, it really drops off in potency. There there can be a cool thing of being able to just wild shape as a bard. You need to grab two levels of druid for that. Um, but I still don't think that you get a lot out of it. Druid's a tricky one because I think druids often gain their best abilities by continuing to be a druid. Yes. Um, and so if you're just taking a few levels of druid, you're worsening the druid levels and you're taking away from what you could have gotten by yeah. staying a bard. And there's also a lot of overlap, bet surprisingly, there's a lot of overlap between low level druid and low level bard spells. They have a lot, like they both have fairy fire. They both have healing word. There, there's they both have thunder wave, so you'd be surprised at how much, like it's not adding to your spell casting arsenal to do this, and then you're you're sacrificing that access to those higher level spells. I think I'm going to give this one a D. I think it's a D as well. I just don't. I just don't know where where you. I don't know how you make this one work. I don't know what you're gaining. You're, you're it's, it's not subtracting a, from both. Yeah, you are. You're you're you really are taking away from both to make this to make this work. Yeah. When we come to the fighter, I mean the 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 sword song, the song of swords. Uh, the song of swords, one of the oldest songs known for what is the history of humanity, but a litany of violence. History of violence. This is your metal band. This is your warrior poet. This is your dropkick Murphys. You could make this work, and it would make an interesting character, but probably not the most mechanically optimal. I do think that when we're looking at the grand scheme of things, this does work better than some of the previous ones we were looking at. Mm -hmm. I think specifically, and this is something that's interesting, I think Swords Bard is one of the most multi-class positive options for the yes. bard. Swords bard fighter kind of gets you to be the spell sword. Can you combine blade flourishes with battle master maneuvers? Like, could you apply those on the same attack? Can you? Swords bard, not our favorite bard, but a great multi-class here. I even think, and I'm not going to look at you when I say this, the whispers bard could be a cool combination here. Um... I think that some of the lesser talked about bards pair well with fighter. I think this is a B. I think that there's an inroad here. Again, you're not going to be building a character that is going to work like a traditional fighter, and you're not going to be building a character that's going to work like your traditional bard. You're, as with your, kind of your game plan with the swords bard in general, you're making a character who's using their magic to augment their ability to fight. Mm -hmm. I think that this is an interesting tack to take to approach that concept. There's a lot of different ways to do this. And I don't know where this would fall in the overall scheme of things, but I am imagining, again, as a swords bard, you're going to get extra attack on your own. So you could just take a couple levels of fighter, just a dip of one to three levels to get action surge, to get um, battle master maneuvers, and to get just second wind and a few of those other things. And then you have a pretty potent combination there. You get to drop fairy fire on your enemies, action surge, and run in and attack. Yeah, yeah. Or or just using any other simple bard spells. You can use all your bardic inspiration on yourself, so you're a little selfish in that respect. Let's imagine a level 6 swords bard with 3 levels of fighter. You've got extra attack, you've got action surge. You've got Blade Flourishes, and you've got your Martial Maneuvers, or potentially Eldritch Knight. I don't know if I would go that way here. So you have a lot of that you can layer on top of one another, a bunch of abilities that are going to come back on a short rest, and then you have those spells to augment. You're, you've still got third-level spells. To be perfectly honest, this character looks a lot like a Paladin. You know, in a weird way. Yeah. S just deconstructed. So because I don't think it benefits every possible combo and because I think that you do have to be a little choosy on how you build this, I think I'm going to stick with my B ranking. Yeah, like like is is a level 9 character that's 3 levels of fighter, 6 levels of bard 
is it as good as a ninth level paladin? Uh, is there's not much in the game that is. There's, no, there isn't. Um, but is it weak? No, no. I it's, think it's I absolutely think it's playable, it, it, and it does some interesting things with handing out bardic inspiration. It does some interesting things with actually. It probably has a really high AC, and that would actually be the argument to go Eldritch Knight because you could go Eldritch Knight and that would get you access to shield. Eldritch Knight, though, does really starve you for what ability scores you're put investing in. because No, you don't, because you don't need to worry about intelligence at all. You're gonna, the only spells that you're going to learn as an Eldritch Knight are a couple cantrips that don't care about what your, your ability score modifier is, and you're going to pick up maybe shield, absorb elements... And yeah, absorb elements would be great for you too. And that's another pickup that you wouldn't get otherwise. And maybe find familiar. And then you're able to really pump your AC into the stratosphere. Because you're going to be able to do that blade flourish that, that is the defensive flourish to add the, 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 the bardic inspiration die to your AC. Mm -hmm. And then you have shield on top of that. And you got, you got enough spell slots to work, work that around. I think there's I, some good combos here. Yeah, I, I do too. I think that you've actually got something in all that that works i think specifically we're looking at the swords bard um i i think that this trails off as soon as you're like i'm a champion lore bard it, it's not the worst idea yeah. but it's not quite as powerful as as picking like the swords bard. i think that this is also a case and and part of the reason why i like to think about this is that i don't think that this character stays as strong once you get into tier three and tier four mm. But I think that the, this is, again, another one of those examples of those multi-class builds that are really strong in the sweet spot of D&D &D between level 5 and 10. And I think it is. When we look at the monk... Um... We... No, I don't think there's anything here. It's very meditative music. Is this like instrumental... Is this lo-fi instrumental beats? This is lo-fi. Yeah, this is like... Lo-fi instrumental beats, just chilling, meditative, that, that meditative yeah. swing of things, yeah. Something with a good beat to go along with the fists. Now, here's the thing. When I'm listening to my lo-fi, the last thing I'm going to do is fight somebody. And same with this character. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to be good at anything but chilling. I, I just don't see it. I just don't see this combination. I, there's, I mean, we could get into it, but I think you just got to trust us when we say that I don't think you gain anything. I know that we, we rag on the monk a lot, but the monk would be better than this combo. Just playing a straight monk, better than playing a bard monk. Playing a straight bard, definitely better. I just don't know. I feel like the monk, once again, is a class that you're going to, you got to take a couple levels of it to really get the features that you want. Like, I, I when I look at monk, I'm like, okay, I need to take five levels of this to get to stunning strike. Yeah. We don't need we're we're not really worried about unarmored defense. And bards like wearing light armor, but you could dispense with it and probably come out okay, but you're gonna need to invest in the wisdom score. Mm. So the ability scores are all over the place. I think this is a yeah. D tier. Yeah, this is no. Don't I don't see it. Well, let's talk about the Paladin. Okay, so this is the first time that we are looking at the Bard, who is a charisma-based character, and the Paladin, who is both fighting, but also a charisma-based half-caster. Yes. So now we're doubling up on charisma, which is great. Yes. And uh, again, the Swords Bard really stands out here, I think. Yes. Swords Bard and any Paladin is really cool this this i think is closer to your christian rock than the cleric in a lot of ways well okay if 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 the cleric bard was relying k this one is under oath under oath is the it, exactly yeah yes this one is the yes. heavier yes angrier band because yeah. we're smiting things yes um, we're gonna we're gonna come out swinging yeah right and okay this the this is how this build works Take two levels of Paladin. Just two? Just two. Two levels of Paladin, all the rest Bard. But in this video, we're starting Bard. Yes. So you can, that's fine. You can start as a Bard, 
with this, then at some point you take two levels of Paladin. Cool. Um, it's a little tricky because you got to still have a 13 in your strength. Now, at which, the same time, do you, do you think a six, six Paladin is bad? I don't think it's bad. I just think that you run into trouble here because you the 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 goal of this build is you want to crank up the spell slots that you have available so that you can have higher damage smites. Mm. So what's happening here is and again, let's let's snapshot this. We're going swords bard again. Okay? We're going to take 6 levels of swords bard and we're going to take 2 levels of paladin. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a character that is level 8 that still actually has 4th level spell slots but doesn't have, um, they don't have yet their access to 4th level spells um, but they're going to get it pretty soon. So your spell casting progression is not greatly delayed by this. And what you're able to do though is you're able to use those 4th level slots for smites. And so you now have a better smite than a paladin does of the equivalent level and you have all a bunch of your bard features you have all your blade flourishes you've got extra attack and you've got all those great bard spells to augment your your combat skills i think this is one of those cases swords bard obviously stands out but really the the bard paladin combo works better than a lot of the other combinations yes. we've talked about in general i think for all the swords I think bard stands there s tier i i i, I think I don't know if this is the strongest of the possible multi-class combos. I'm giving it an A. I think it's S. Okay. I, I, I think that there is an I think that there's only one other class that comes as close in this combo, for at least looking at the bards. And I think that it's a, a matter of taste. That's here. fair. I, um, I know what I'm giving the S to, and I could give I more than one S. Um, I, I we're gonna come to that too. I okay. It is not the best. I will agree that it's not the best. So it is A plus S, potentially. I'll let you take the S. I'll dampen your S with an A. Interesting. So that... you're, being, you're being the negative Nancy this time. How is an A negative? I'm saying it's one of the best options. I mean for you, A. a, a, a. <laughs> Listen, I, I feel very strongly about the one I'm giving S tier yeah. to, and we'll get to that in a minute. But this is one of your best options, yeah. A tier Love it. You know what? Thinking about this, it is A. And you know the reason why it's A and not S? Because yes. you still have to solve the ability score problem. Because ultimately, you you need to put a 13 in strength. And as a swords bard, you probably would rather have your dexterity be your higher stat. And so you have a little bit of a... You're still using strength or dexterity to make your attacks with. And we're gonna then the other option gets around that so we're going to come to that when we get there but okay i'm well you're, you've talked me down it's a plus cool uh as we move on to the ranger no surprise here both monty and i s tier why would we give this an s tier i have no idea i'm just saying stuff um ranger's not s tier ranger is this like exploratory music this is are you like i don't know who sings and are you yogi bear <laughs> no I, no, and that's that's not a good good take on it. Th sings? This is more this is more of the campfire song, okay, th fair. than the druid. Actually, for thinking about it, right? <laughs> like this this is the park ranger that brings out the acoustic guitar around the bonfire and teaches all the kids to to make uh, s'mores. Oh, he's that he's that park ranger. Yeah, he's that camp counselor. Yeah, that camp. <laughs> okay, so the ranger. <laughs> Bard is the camp counselor. Yes. Uh, the awkward one that we all had as a kid that we were yeah. that later on in life we were like, wow, that guy sucked. Um, <laughs> and this combo kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, or maybe is it the person that's always writing songs about their cat? Now, okay. Because the Beastmaster Ranger. <laughs> if the Sword Beast. If you take a Swords Bard though, and you combine it with Ranger, do we get something here? I don't know what you get. I don't know what you're building towards. Is it? Yeah. Um. I just can't think of anything that that combo would give you that you wouldn't be better off served by just going straight single class. What if I'm a Gloomstalker Whispers Bard? 
I think that you're straight up weaker than a Gloomstalker or a Whispers Bard. C tier for the Gloomstalker Whispers Bard. How is this not just D tier? Gloomstalker Whispers Bard. The Gloom Whisper. Whispering, singing songs in the night. Honestly. Of gloom and sadness. I don't. Oh, is this super. The Gloomstalker Whispers Bard is super emo. My Chemical Romance. <laughs> is it? This is Gerard Way. Shouldn't My Chemical Romance be like. I don't know. Gerard is a Whispers Bard. Okay. Okay. You're the expert. Okay, so you say D tier? I think so. I feel like there's more here than there is with the Barbarian. There's more here than there is with the Artificer. There's more here than there is with the Monk. I, I feel like this is another one of those cases where it's like, there's nothing taking, like, what, the thing with multiclassing, and this is the thing that you always have to consider, is what does the character look like at the same level? Because a lot, I feel like a lot of people go, well, if you have six levels of this and six levels of this, then you have both this and this and this at the same time. And like, well, but then you don't have all those features that you would have had at level 12. And so the, the combination here is you're slowing down your spell progression. You're slowing down access to all your abilities. Everything with both, everything with the ranger that is really good generally you want to combine it with things that give you good melee attacks. Like So the ranger is really, really good with the rogue, and it's really, really good with the fighter because all those things are working really well, well together. And so maybe it is C because you could be a Whispers Bard ranger. I just feel like there's nothing that screams, wow, this is amazing about that. No, there isn't, but I'm going to give it a C tier. All right. You give it a, T, a D, I give it All a C. Right. Yeah, I, I just don't think you're getting much there. I don't what think about... you're getting much, but you're getting a little. What about the rogue? <sighs> okay, the rogue. Whisper Sassin. The rogue bard is conceptually very popular. But, in my opinion, the arcane trickster and the whispers bard are the subclasses that you take if you want to multi-class these classes. I feel like the Bard doesn't really gain much out of sneak attack because of the way sneak attack progresses. The Bard is often using other things with their bonus action because they have healing word and, inspi and, and inspiring word and all these things to be using, so it's hard for them to use their cunning action. You, you have Bard subclasses like the Whispers Bard that makes you feel like you are getting a sneak attack and you have rogue subclasses like the Arcane Trickster or the even the Swashbuckler that are making you feel like you have panache or magic. And the one thing that, that this combo does give you is a ton of skills that you have expertise in, mm -hmm. assuming you take enough levels of both to get them. Is there a good combo here with like Valor Bard, Swords Bard, Whispers Bard, Glamour Bard? Um, but the cost of combining... See, the thing is, the cost of combining these two classes is you have a weaker sneak attack. Yeah. And you have a worse spell progression. So whatever you gain has to overcome that. And so... One of the things to note is that the Whispers Bard with their Psychic, their psychic Blades thing... Well, if you just had those extra bard levels, it would do more damage. Or if you had those extra rogue levels, it would do more damage. But compared to the same level character that was single classed. I just think that this is an example. If, if, if I was going to offer something, this is an example of when combining two things that are so close to each other conceptually in many ways results in a weird dilution. Like, it, it, it's, it's almost like the bard and the rogue are on the same resonant sound wave, but just out of phase slightly. And you get that phase cancellation or that peaking 
in the in the vibes between these two the songs they're they're singing. So a rogue and a bard are great when they're separate characters working together, but this as the same character it just feels like I think in terms of skill characters this is incredible. Is it though? I mean, how many like how many skills are you going to end up with? A lot. Yeah, but you I, already have a ton as either character. But now I have my, I What do you what are you giving it? I guess a C. I think I'm going to give it a B. I think it's okay. I think it's better than that. I think that there's potential here. Uh the hard part is that the bard is a spellcaster first. The rogue is a combatant first. And there are bards, though, that favor combat. And if you are going to kind of put those on the rogue, you kind of get your spells to augment your abilities. You have a ton of skills. You have expertise. You have your bardic inspiration. I think that there's some build options here, and I'm, I'm going to give it a B. B for okay. build options. I mean, I just don't know. I think it's cool. I don't think it's particularly strong. That's Fair. why I give it a C. Fair. As we move on to the Sorcerer, for some reason, this is, in my mind, the most confident and boisterous of the combos. This is like your David Bowie or your Freddie Mercury, if you're the glamour bard mm. mixed with like Sorcerer. Or maybe you're ACDC and it's time for high voltage and thunderstruck and all that like blasty spells that are really blowing people's minds. The face melting solo. This is your stadium rock yeah. character. I, I think that these actually combine really well. Again, we have two primary spellcasters, both charisma based. So what are you gaining? Well, meta magic. Yes, and I think that this is the real Ironically, though, despite our stadium rock proclamation, you know what I think the secret sauce here is? Subtle spell. You got it. The bass player. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That. Yes. Subtle spell is outrageous on a bard. I think it's one of the things that bards are hungry for. Um, also, bards love having the idea of twin spell. They also probably don't mind Quicken Spell either for a lot of different bard options. The challenge here is twofold. And we talked about, we've addressed this now a couple times. First of all, how many levels of, of sorcerer do you actually take? What level do you get meta magic at? It? You get meta magic at level three. So, so you have to do a three level dip. Yeah. And I think that that's, I think that that's the most of what you're taking. So you're going to get a couple sorcery points. You're going to get your two meta magic options. And the thing is, is you could also take meta magic at it. I was just going to say, is, is taking this multi-class as powerful as just taking meta magic adept? Or is it the combination of taking this multi-class and meta magic adept? That's actually a very valid point. And I think with meta magic, if you have three levels of sorcerer, you're going to have three sorcery points plus the extra two that you get from meta magic meta magic addict so you have five sorcery points which is actually enough to twin a fifth level spell if you wanted to and a lot of uses of subtle spell and you also now have the ability to regain some sorcery points and stuff like that so i think it's a really good high level build so you're not taking these sorcerer levels until later or are you taking them early and then hoping i think that probably the soonest i would consider doing this might be not until tier three interesting um, it would be really good with a higher level character because the thing is that is the three level I think that what you could probably get away with is taking meta magic adept early in your bard progression and then if you feel like you need more sorcery points and you want more meta magic options and you feel like you've got the spells that you want to have take those three levels of sorcerer I do it's think it's a tricky build to make it work I, I want to give this an A, though. I think that it's a strong combo. And, uh, and you don't have to work too hard to make it work. I think that it's a B. Fair. Because the question of when do you take those sorcerer levels really matters. That's fair. Um, because at, at, what, at whatever point you take those sorcerer spells, you're going to have to ask yourself, 
do I want these meta magics or do I want access to higher level spells now? Mm. And in a lot of cases, I go, okay, would you rather have subtle spell or would you rather have dimension door and polymorph? We come to the warlock and there's a lot of ways that these can combine, but there's one way that they can really combine. We did a whole video about it. The uh, Swords Bard Hexblade Warlock. The Hex Bard. The Hex Bard. Th this is the character that's like, I put a spell on you because you're mine. You're so vain. You probably think, think the song, song is, is about, about you. you. Yes. Um, <laughs> the real like like wronged lover genre of music. Yes, there's yes. like a, a vibe of like cursing your <laughs> lover for wrong. Yeah, 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 that's the vibe. Yeah. But but also I. So here's the question, because this is my favorite combo. The Hexblade and the Swords Bard are incredible together. Now, your Charisma gets to be used for attacks. It's it's an S-tier dip. It is an this, So this is my S-tier. But here's my question for myself and for you. Is it S tier? Are we are we allowed to get? I mean, we're allowed to do whatever we want, but are we giving yeah. it S tier because Swords Bard and Hexblade, or is it S tier like if I take Great Old One and Lore, is it still awesome? No, no. And it's not S tier if you take more than one one or two levels of Hexblade tops. I I think that. As long as you're taking less than three levels of Warlock, you're probably going to get a lot out of it. So one level of Hexblade Warlock on a Swords Bard or a Valor Bard potentially, potentially a lot a of... A Bard? Potentially. You know, the other, the other thing that could be said, though, is that a two-level dip of any Warlock on any Bard is pretty good just to get Eldritch Blast and Hex. Eldritch Blast, Hex. Um, Agonizing Blast. When you get your invocations. Yes, level two. Level so two. So if you take two levels of Warlock, you get Eldritch Blast, you get Hex. You get your invocations. You get your invocations, and that means that you can also get Agonizing Blast, and you can get Forceful Blast. And so you can push people around. And I think as a bard, with El a bard with Eldritch Blast is actually pretty good, and it solves a lot of, like... Oh, I'm just using Vicious Mockery again. And you get those regenerating spell slots that you can use for Hex, too. Yeah. So the two levels isn't bad. And I think, at worst, is B tier. It's just that it really excels. And I think that maybe if we come back to my comparison with the Paladin, is, that, is once again, it's like that very specific thing of taking just two levels of Paladin is really good. But then the more levels of it that you take, I think that the builds, it, it sinks yeah. down into B tier. That's fair. So I, I'm going to give this one the S tier. I think that, yeah. honestly, Swords Bard, Hexblade Warlock is so fun. Uh, I might be biased because I played one. It is awesome. At 20th level. <laughs> it is really, really strong. Yeah. Um, and the other options for the Bard are not bad at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, so you you could do a lot worse here. I think that the thing that you don't want to do is take a whole bunch of levels of Warlock yeah. with Bard. Because again, and we'll get into this in the future when we talk about the Warlock perspective, I think the Warlock gains very little from taking Bard levels. And so... Yeah. Who are you making your pact with here? Oh, you know what this is? This is the musician who makes the deal with the devil for the golden loot. The Will Ferrell skit where he, uh, uh, where Will Ferrell plays the devil on yeah. SNL. Yeah. And this is the devil went down to Georgia. This it, or or Tenacious D, the Pick of Destiny. This is the classic Tenacious tale. D. Dave of Grohl the, is of, the devil of the fiddler or the musician getting approached by the devil and being offered a deal to be the best musician there ever was. I've just answered my question. My patron is Dave Grohl. As we come to the wizard. Or maybe you sign a deal with like Spotify. As we come to the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say that musicians have a reputation for signing a bunch of bad deals. Like I feel like the role playing potential of your bard s signing a pact with some eldritch entity and not reading the fine print. There's a story in that, but there's a sad story. 
Like, what if you were like the Beatles? So what do you gain from having a spell book? As a wizard bard, I don't see it. I'm it's moving, sheet I'm, music. I'm changing the topic. It's by sheet the way. music. Um, this is your classical, mu- like classical sheet music. You're you're writing your spells. You are a composer. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Is this combo good? No, but the idea of the the lyricist that it, or, or the composer that is right and your wand. The wand okay, works perfectly. Come on. Yes. You're the conductor with yes. your sheet music, yes. your book of shit. Oh. And your Beethoven or Mozart oh. or Bach. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. S tier. Yeah. S tier. Yeah. Just give me the artificer, give me the wizard. Yeah, yeah. you nailed it. Yeah. You nailed it. Uh, for real, though, they don't work very well. I, I don't see what you gain i don't under like there's no reason to take levels of wizard as a bard like is there something to be said for getting illusionist or enchantment wizard i don't think it's worth it okay what about the blade singer shouldn't the blade singer and the swords bard shouldn't they be bffs do they are they compatible? the sword singer are they compatible we're looking at intelligence and charisma, so they're not nearly as compatible as paladin, sorcerer, warlock. I think the the thing with all of these like gishy sort of subclasses mechanically in D and D is that all of them want to get the extra attack as soon as they possibly can. So you already are in a problem here where as soon as you split off before fifth level, you delay your access to extra attack. Mm-hmm. So you want to be able to get that as quickly as you can. And then all of them offer you different ways of attacking with different, like the blade singer swords bard, the sword singer. I don't, I, I feel like if you have three levels of each, I would have rather just had six of one. And I feel like if I had, Six of one and three of the other, I would have rather have just had nine. And I think the other issue with the Blade Singer and the Swords Bard is there is no. Both of them have a mechanic that is tied to the, uh, their ability score. So the Swords Bard needs a charisma score for its uses of Blade Flourish. And the Blade Singer needs its intelligence score to boost its Blade Song. So there's no way to make those two things. You you need the intelligence and you need right. the charisma, but then you're not getting an attack stat. I'm feeling like I'm leaning towards the D tier. Yeah, I just don't. I I, I, I just don't think that you gain anything mm-hmm. out of it. It's that's it, it seems it's it's one of those things that it's like oh I, do these work? So. <sighs> Okay. I feel like Colby has done something crazy with this. I mean, Colby's done something crazy with everything. Colby finds the exceptions to the rule. Yes. Uh, but that's just what Colby, D, D4, D and D, deep dive, check them out. Uh, great build, guys. I, yeah, I feel like Colby would be able to figure this one out. He can I, figure it out, but it's still a D tier. It's a D tier unless you do Colby's specific build where he somehow combines wizard and bard and makes a perfect... Yeah. I feel like Colby is like the exception to everything because he finds... He finds the secrets. Yeah, he finds the secrets. Now, okay, D tier, but when we look at this overall, I think the vibe I'm getting is that the Bard... The Bard's such a good class that usually when it does multi-class, it's taking only a couple levels of something else. It yeah. rarely takes more than a couple levels of something else. Yes. I think, I think overall, that is a through line across the entire Bard. It's like, what can you... And this is interesting because bards have a reputation as dabblers. Yeah. And great multi-classers. And I think what we've seen with this is that a lot of, there's a lot of potential for the bard to take a couple levels of everything from cleric to paladin to sorcerer to warlock, even fighter, maybe even rogue, gain a little bit from that one to two level dip, but you really don't want to go like half and half. Up on screen right now, though, we're going to take a look at our community rankings. And as we look at this, I I think that a lot of people feel similar to us. There's some interesting ideas portrayed here on this this graph. First Mm. of all, it definitely looks like Warlock and Sorcerer are the prime picks. 
I'm surprised that the that the sorcerer beat out the paladin in our community rankings. One of the things that is very interesting though is that the paladin, the sorcerer, and the warlock were all more highly rated than the community than staying single classed as a bard. I think that says a lot. Those three, even though paladin was quite a bit lower than the warlock and yeah. the sorcerer, uh, it still raises above the threshold of this is one of the awesome choices for yeah. multi-classic. Um, surprisingly, rogue really climbs pretty high in the rankings. And I think a lot of people who love the rogue kind of split that palette in. It, it's almost like everybody got, was given three choices. Mm -hmm. And I feel like majority went warlock sorcerer. And then their third choice was split between whether it was Paladin or Rogue. Yeah, I still think the Rogue is not the strongest choice here. Um, I think the Paladin's better than the Rogue. I, I do too. And and the community agreed. Um, I am... The fighter got a good following behind it. I am very surprised that the Cleric was not more highly ranked by the community. Because I thought that this was a, a dead ringer. I mean, when we talk about... When we talk about the top three, I actually think everything landed exactly where I, it should, hmm. where the cleric is recognized. If you think of top three, the cleric was recognized. Some people picked it in its top three. Yeah. But a lot of people said, hey, you know what? The paladin, the rogue, the sorcerer, and the warlock are better. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Some people thought the fighter was better. I kind of agree with that too. The warlock, though, 79% of respondents gave it to the warlock. I, I feel like that speaks for yeah, itself. Yeah. With that, if you've tried any of these multi-class and combinations or have any opinions that differ from the community or from us, let us know about them in the comments below. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube, please consider supporting the channel by following the links in the description below. And if you want to check us out playing D&D, you can check out our live play in the world of Drakenheim, which is Tuesday evenings on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. And we've got plenty more tier ranking content for you to check out right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.